Hey everybody, in this video I'll be covering the press pull command in Fusion 360. To start, we have a sketch profile here for an L-shaped bracket we're going to extrude. And when you have a sketch profile, all you have to do is go to press pull, click on that button, and now we can start making selections. Since we want to select the sketch profile in this case, we can just hover over it and left click. And as we do that, it brings up the extrude menu. So then we can create an extrude to our uh, desired parameters. So let's just go ahead and pull this out and click OK. So that's how we can interact with sketch profiles um, with reference to the press pull command. Now let's take a look at how press pull interacts with 3D geometry that's currently modeled. In this case, we have an L-shaped bracket with two countersunk holes and a slot that's cut all the way through. We'll click on press pull and make our first selection. In this case, that will be this edge here. When we click on an edge, we can change the radius of the edge through the fillet command window. So the fillet command window automatically pops up whenever I click on an edge using press pull. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we select various faces in this model. Let's say, for example, I want to quickly change the length of this bracket. We'll go to press pull, click on this face, and I can either click and drag this arrow to change the length, or I can type a parameter in this distance field. At the top, we have our faces selection filter. Currently, it's telling us that we have one face selected. That's this face highlighted in blue. We can deselect this face by clicking this X button here. Moving down, we have our offset type. Currently, it's set to automatic by default. However, if we expand this dropdown, we have two additional options. We have modify existing feature and new offset. Now, automatic will try to automatically assume what we want to do for this particular operation. However, let's take a look at what modify existing feature does. So we'll go ahead and make the selection. And when we press OK here, You'll notice that no additional features were added to this timeline. That's because it modified the existing extrude based off of the original sketch over here. I'd like to point out that because I used the modify existing feature option for the press pull on that face, these holes automatically spaced out symmetrically with reference to this construction element that I have here. That's just mid plane between this face on this side of the bracket and this face. This is the advantage of using modify existing feature because if you have other components that are driven off of other features early in your design, so in this case, these are driven off the earlier portion of this design here in this timeline, they will automatically space themselves out if that is what I'm looking to do. Let's see how new offset differs from modify existing feature. We'll go to press pull, select our face of interest, and then we'll set the offset type to new offset. Here, we could set an offset of 0.4 inches. This will get us to the same overall length that we had before. Now, when we click OK, I want you to pay attention to how this differs from the previous option. So we've added to the length of the bracket itself. However, these holes and the slot here did not automatically reposition based off of its previous constraints. This is because since we had it set to new offset, it creates a new feature here in the timeline. So if I back this up one step, you'll see that it returns to its original state. This differs from modify existing feature because modify existing feature was essentially going into this original extrude for the length of the bracket and changing it there. And when this plane was created between this face and this face, based off of that extrude, um, everything would automatically reposition itself based on the constraints for um, this second countersunk hole, which is mirrored about that plane, and this slot that is centered with the plane. We can also use press pull to change the size of the slot or the size of these holes. If we select the interior face of the slot, we can dynamically change its size. We can do the same thing with these holes by pressing press pull, clicking that face, and then we can change the size of the face accordingly. We can even change the size of the countersink surface here. So we can select press pull, select this face, and then move it or set a parameter for the distance. 